Welcome to Private Club Radio, your weekly source for industry education, news and discussion. Broadcasting from Tampa, Florida, ladies and gentlemen, here is your host, Gabriel Aloisi. Now, just the other day on Friday night, I hosted a virtual happy hour over Zoom with my family. We brought out all sorts of different bottles and we were talking about it. We had a ton of fun and it was just incredible to connect with my family all over the country. We hardly ever do it anyways. And this made it a perfect opportunity for us all to get together, at least virtually. The same thing's happening with your members. They are feeling disconnected. They're probably alone in their homes for the most part. And we need a human bond That's why clubs exist, of course, and that's why they will continue to exist. But my family and I had a ton of fun, but heck, we don't know anything about the complexities of the things that we are drinking or who produced them or what the supply is or know the owner of the distillery or the brewery or the winery that created those bottles. How cool would it be to be able to do that with someone who's a professional, someone who, whose job is to be like the Indiana Jones of wine, going to Napa Valley and Sonoma Valley, unearthing the hidden treasures, the little-known secrets, the gems that don't find their ways to the store shelves. That's exactly what Martin Cody does from Cellar Angels. And for a very limited time during this emergency, he's offering virtual wine tastings so your club members can experience wines that would normally cost them $500 a bottle at a fraction of the price and learn about the story of each of these vineyards producing these incredible wines. So Martin's going to come on and tell us about CellarAngels.com, how you can get him booked right now to do a virtual program with your club to get them connected. I think that every club listening to this needs to do it. I'm going to let Martin share the rest of the details. Without further ado, here's my guest for this week, Martin Cody. Well, special guest joining me here on Private Club Radio today, Martin Cody, who is the co-founder and president at Seller Angels. You may have heard him, what, three years ago now? Uh, Martin, you were on the show? Three years ago, August coming up, and it went by like that. It did. Wow. It's it's incredible. We've been doing the show for almost five years now, and uh, yeah, uh, it has gone by really fast. Anyway, thanks again for joining us. You were one of our um, most liked guests three years ago. I remember we got a lot of great comments from the presentation that you gave here on the show and just want to chat with you about what you're up to. I know you're up to some new things right now, now that the world has gone virtual. <laughs> it's crazy. And, I, and hopefully the content three years ago was good. Maybe it was the subject matter being wine. Uh, sure. The subject matter hasn't changed much, but happy to help out again. And certainly great to catch up with you and, and see what's happening in the private club world. Awesome. Well, for folks that don't know about Seller Angels and what you can provide, why don't you just give us a little background on, on Seller Angels and how it helps private clubs out there? It's a little bit deja vu for us because we founded in 2010, 10 years ago, a little over 10 years ago, on the heels of the last great economic recession. And we were, at that time, owners of a bricks and mortar wine store in downtown Chicago. And when the the global recession was happening then, we realized, okay, all these small, fantastic wineries uh, are going out of business or getting gobbled up. So there's got to be a way to help them and there's got to be a way to raise some money for charity. So that really was the nexus of Seller Angels. And now 10 years down the road, uh, same thing. We still exclusively feature wines on our website, sellerangels.com, from Napa and Sonoma only. But the unique thing, and this hasn't changed, is that these are wines that are not in a distribution channel. So you can't get them at your local wine store, your local big box store. You also can't get them at, potentially even at the club because they're they're not distributed. And so that's what makes these wines and these wine experiences that we offer really, really unique and highly sought after. So how do you guys find these wines out of curiosity, Martin? I have to go to Napa often, uh, which is a terrible <laughs> yeah, uh, sounds occupational awful. hazard. Uh, actually, since the last time we spoke, well, actually, since 2010, I've probably been to Napa Sonoma 45 times. And it's interesting, and you probably have, I mean, I know there's members in every single private club that are that are wine gurus and wine geeks, and, and they love wine. And they've been to Napa as well. And one of the things during that wine journey that people learn about is when they get there, they realize there's so many small wineries that they'd never heard of. And these wineries produce, you know, a couple thousand cases. 
there's no distributor that's going to carry a winery that only makes 500 to 1,000 cases, barring some sort of miracle. So these folks have no way to get their product to market unless they get feet into the door. And some of them don't even have actual wineries. So it's really challenging for them. They're just making great wine. Uh, we find them by going out to the valley, word of mouth, uh, not too dissimilar to how all of us connect with each other and find great restaurants or we find great golf courses or we find those sorts of things. It's a friend telling a friend. And that's basically what has caused Cellar Angels to grow so fast is wine lovers telling other wine lovers, hey, they have wines that you can't get and I can't get. And a portion of every single transaction goes to charity. So it, it really is self-sufficient and a pretty easy model. What types of charities do you guys support at Cellar Angels, Martin? Uh, great question. We have about 15 right now, and it kind of runs the gamut. So there's environmental charities where if you want to help a, an organization dig wells in third world countries and to find water, we've got that. If you want to help animals, we have an animal charity, several healthcare charities. Probably uh, are the two segments that are most popular are military charities and also now World Central Kitchen. On the military charities, many of the golf community are familiar with Folds of Honor because they do a lot of stuff uh, in the PGA community and also in the private club community. They're a charity partner. When you're going into Napa and Sonoma, like what are you looking for? What, what's your goal when you're going in there? Are you looking for the hidden gems? Are you looking for specific varietals? How does it all work? Great question. It, absolutely hidden gems. It's, it's like discovering the abandoned dunes of wines, right? Or stream song, those types of places where it's sacred ground, no one's ever heard about it, producing unbelievable fruit, limited production, and we kind of like to be in the discovery process before the mainstream. So there's, it surprises a lot of people. In Napa alone, there's over a thousand wineries and probably 750 of them to 800 don't have national distribution. So there's a lot of potential fantastic wineries, but they only make two to 300 or 400 cases of wine. So those are the ones that we feature on the website and that we do uh, virtual tastings with. And then when you're looking at Napa and Sonoma, you talked about varietals. So Cabernet is king, Chardonnay is queen. Uh, the, the big reds, the, the whites, Sauvignon Blanc uh, is, is very popular. Pinot Noir, Merlot, Zinfandel. We kind of run the gamut in those five or six varietals, but genuinely that's what our, our membership loves. So that's kind of what we stick to. You've got a few of those behind you, I see. So I'd love for you just to, to maybe go over a few of your favorites, some of the ones you found here recently that uh, well, people should be aware of. I'll, I'll show you what's in my glass. It's pink. Uh, hey, I'll okay. cheers you, by the way. I've got, I've got a glass of my own for you. Cheers. <laughs> Virtual cheers. Cheers. And, and that one is a rosé from, I don't know if you can see the label, it's called Madeline, but it's from a gentleman named Michael Trujillo. Not many people may know Michael Trujillo himself, but if they know Herb Lamb Vineyards and Herb Lamb Vineyards in wine is, you know, kind of like Shinnecock, Augusta, uh, Riviera. It is sacred ground, Herb Lamb. Michael was the winemaker for Herb Lamb for 20 some odd years. Not many people know he has his own private label. So this is his rosé. Uh, it's the 2018 rosé. That's just fantastic. The other one is uh, McLaren. McLaren is a, uh, a wine made in the Sonoma region by a gentleman named Steve Law. Again, a couple hundred cases, that's his Sauvignon Blanc. And he's a terrific individual from Scotland, made his way nice. to France, where he got bit by the wine bug hard and now is in uh, the Sonoma region making wine. You have a red wine, so I'm going to show you a red wine. This one's called Maze. Uh, only a couple hundred cases of this produced. And it's from a, a vineyard called Stagecoach, which is also one of those heralded places that is very hard to get fruit from and, and just off the charts. I was talking with someone recently about this wine specifically, and he was tasting it in a virtual tasting. And he said, this has got to be a $300 wine. And I said, nope, under 80 bucks. Wow. Uh, so it's that sort of stuff. And then last but not least, a Pinot Noir from a young lady named Jacqueline Renee, and also in the Russian River Valley, but tiny, tiny boutique production that you would never find unless you were in the Valley or on their private mailing list. That's really cool. So, so let's talk of the favorites. Let's talk about what you're doing right now. So with everyone kind of stuck at home, we're trying to find ways to keep our members engaged, entertained, and ultimately retained. What are you doing to help clubs, Martin? Well, it's interesting. 99% of what everything Seller Angels does is all online, except for about 15 times a year, we do private tastings at various private country clubs around the U.S. And this started 
probably five or six years ago with a chef from a private club in the Hamptons, uh, was a customer of ours and called us up and said, hey, would you guys consider doing a private tasting? Because our members love what I give them from your list and we can't get them. And so we kind of scratched our heads and said, okay, that would be fun to go out to the Hamptons. So that we did four years in a row and now it's just exploded to where mm -hmm. 15 times a year, we've got a pretty high demand list to do a private tasting at the club. It's a two hour guided tasting. It's sit down, chef gets to pair stuff with it off menu, which uh, the chefs love because it's not the same type of cuisine that they're normally making. And that has taken off. But in the virtual world that we're all now finding ourselves in, we decided to start doing some of these virtually because everyone is now getting more and more familiar with Zoom or any type of video platform, whether they want to or not. And it's, and we, I mean, we're a social creature, right? It's, we're human beings. It's why we join clubs. It's the socialization aspect of it. Well, we can be physically distanced uh, which is health and safety recommended, but it doesn't mean we can't be social. So we decided to start making some 90 minute sessions available with private country clubs to say, Hey, your members are all sitting at home. They're bored. I know they're bored because many of them are already our customers and they're telling us they're bored. So this is a way to get them engaged. This is a way to give them something that they can't get anywhere else because they can't get these wines anywhere else. So it's just kind of fun to sit back, taste four or five wines. We put together a tasting kit for them. They can order it 30 days in advance. And then we go through the wines together in a tasting side by side. And we compare tasting notes, talk about the region. And it's really just a great way to, to engage with the member. Is it interactive? Like, so if members have questions or if they're, you know, do you take people through like smelling it and tasting it and then they're giving you their feedback in real time? All the above. And, and we, it gets a lot of fun too, because there's tons of questions. There's, I've never heard of this wine comes up a lot. And in what region is it from? I know Stag's Leap, but I don't know Sonoma Coast. And so th those sorts of things. So yeah, you're sitting down kind of like you and I are now, but on a much grander scale where people can raise their hand with some of the tools, take a question. And it's just a lot of fun. No one's intimidated because they don't want to feel as if they don't know anything. So anybody can ask a question and they can describe the wine and there's no wrong answers. So it's just one of those experiential things that's important in private clubs because you always want to give them a great experience. And, and that's just one way to, to keep people interested and show them some value. That's really cool. So, so they can get the bottles like 30 days in advance, or you can ship them out with it with 30 days in advance. And then they'll get what, like a pack of four bottles and you go through them. How, how does the, can you walk me through the entire process? Is there tasting notes that come along with these bottles? How does it go? Sure. Terrific question. We work with the club to determine a little bit about their member profile and what type of wines they like. And then we put together a, a custom kit with a separate URL and we give that to the club. The club can send it out to their members to say, hey, we're doing a virtual tasting in three weeks. Order your wine from here. Here's four bottles. It gets shipped right to the member's house. And then on a certain night, there's going to be a link that they get provided. They get access to the virtual room, if you will. And we're all in a virtual room and everyone's got their wine. And more often than not, we're all in our pajamas because it seems to be <laughs> the only attire we know. <laughs> and, and you just taste away. So we go through the first wine. Normally in a typical tasting, you go light to heavy. So you're going to go with your lighter wines first, your whites, then your rosés, then your medium to full or bodied reds. And it takes about an hour. We, we allot a little bit longer than that because there's always Q&A and, and a lot of laughs. And, and we, we can throw up pictures of the vineyards and stuff like that to really kind of show people cool. where exactly this is. So it, it's very interactive in that capacity. Oh, I love that. I think what, what I love about this too is oftentimes, you know, what, whereas a club could potentially do this on their own, quote unquote, with their chef or their sommelier or maybe the manager, a lot of times those people just don't feel comfortable doing this type of engagement online. People aren't used to the camera. They're not used to a microphone. I remember when I started my podcast, I had to read everything off of a script for the first 20 episodes before I felt comfortable even on a microphone. So it's great to have someone like you who's been to these places, who's been hands-on and who's a great personality to actually walk them through it. Yes, we do. We're very high touch. So we make certain that the member always has an incredible experience. We try to wow them every single day and it's great to, to get comments back. It's great to get feedback. And when we do these in person, it's, it's heartwarming and great gratifying because we have people coming up to us after the end of every single one of these no matter where we are in the country, and they say something similar to the effect of, I've been going to these for 26 years. This was by far and away the most fun educational wine tasting I've ever been to. And, and that's what it's all about. It's that experience and establishing that connection. 
And this is just one step removed from that virtually, but we can still make it happen. What was one of the, the your favorite finds over the last five, 10 years when you went to one of these trips to Napa? Like what, what was something that you found that you were, it was like discovering the Holy Grail for you? There's a wine that has become a cellar angel favorite from a producer called Noble. And George Noble is the proprietor of that. George is retired in his, he, I think he's in his 70s, just that salt of the earth gentleman. But he lives on an area within Napa called Pritchard Hill. And, and Pritchard Hill is another one of those Rodeo Drive, Park Avenue type of uh, geographies in Napa that is home to some very, very, very famous wines. Uh, Ann Colgen has her wine up there. Ovid is up there. Tim Mandavi's Continuum is sourced from up there. These are all $250 to $500 a bottle. George is also up there as well. And George's wine is $80 a bottle. And George also does something unheard of for the most part in the United States where he ages his wines six to eight years prior to release. Wow, that is, that's, yeah. That's a most... very, a somewhat standard practice in the old world, especially Spain, uh, but not in Napa where it's all right. about commercial success and getting something out into the marketplace. And he only makes about 250 cases a year. So that was, you know, angels singing, uh, pick your metaphor <laughs> type of thing. When we started tasting George's wine several years ago, we it was the Holy Grail. Wow, that's so cool to have those types of experience. And then to be able to share those with members, they can kind of live vicariously through your adventures, it sounds like. <laughs> uh, very much so. And when they go out to the Valley, we set up tastings with George. And George is a perfect example because George doesn't have a physical winery. So you can't go to his tasting room. He doesn't have one. But he will meet you at uh, certain hotels or, or certain uh, tasting stations there within the valley and, and buy lunch and bring half a dozen bottles or more and, and go through a tasting that takes two hours. And wow. just we our customers come back and say, most amazing afternoon in the world. That's fantastic. Well, if clubs want to get involved with you and um, start do, providing this virtual wine tasting for their members, Martin, how do they go about doing so? They can very easily just email me at martin at cellarangels.com and it's seller like wine cellar and angels is plural. They can even call me 847-682-3776. I recognize that might be dangerous, but so far we haven't had any problems. <laughs> uh, that is my cell phone. It is never far from me as most everyone's cell phone is rarely far from them, but Martin at cellarangels.com or call me and say, I'm absolutely interested. Or they can just go to the seller angels website, click on info and uh, submit something there and say, yes, let's talk about this. And I, I, I will say that I've, I've recommended a few of my clients to Martin and the ones that have taken advantage of it have had nothing but rave reviews for what he's doing and for the quality that you are providing. So Martin, thanks for just being such a wonderful resource for the private club world. I hope a lot of people take you up on this because listen, members need something to do. This would be a really fun activity for them to, to learn, enjoy, and have a little taste of something so uh, cheers to you, man, and, and to your health, sir. Uh, thanks so much. I hope they take advantage of it because we're all in this together. And what better way to do it than wine? Hope you enjoyed that. And I hope you do hit up Martin over at sellerangels.com. I really think doing these types of events are what is going to keep your members happy and retained and feel that sort of connection that everyone right now is missing. I hope to catch you back here next week on Private Club Radio. And until then... Here's to your membership success. Private Club Radio is brought to you by Concert Golf Partners, helping to preserve and enhance private golf and country clubs. Visit concertgolfpartners.com to learn more about the recapitalization process.